Welcome to today's workout, and guess what? We're gonna work on something super complicated today, and that's gonna be moving this cast iron waistline in the concrete for a cast iron exposed tub. This is a mess that we got going on, super complicated. Might as well video it, and let's get into it. This is the cast iron tub. It's a heavy, heavy girl, super heavy. Right here is where our exposed waistline is gonna go, going down. I'm gonna have to measure all of this out. We don't have a lot of space to work with here because we have this pole system, which I'll show you right now. I need to attach all of this for us, and I'm gonna do a separate episode on hooking all this up. Uh, this pole is for the curtain. I got a wand. I got so much going on here. I don't even know what to do. So today I'm just like game planning because I'm just overwhelmed by what I need to do to make this work. I need to cut these poles. It's just, it's a lot of work. So let's uh, start ripping out that concrete. That's what we have with the cast. So I'm going to measure the, where it is now and where it has to go because it has to be actually perfect. Well, the first sign of good news right off the bat is we have the cast iron is running this way, I think. And I think I need to pull back the waist a little bit. So my goal is going to be, I have to take out probably this area right here and try to get to the knuckle where the P-track goes. And I, it's actually better this way, I actually lucked out. But now I gotta break through all this concrete and I gotta see what's going on. So let me start breaking this out and then we'll game plan on how we're gonna fix this. careful because you know the cast this is cast i guess it doesn't matter if it disintegrates don't want to have an issue it looks pretty good so now i just need to get to the connection which i probably have to rip out to here so here to here and then i gotta dig all this out so let's dig it out oh. progress you don't want to kill it remember i got the I got that pipe right there, right where I'm hitting. So, I kind of don't want to go too crazy. Is that a, uh, oh, look at that. What did I found? See that? Oh, baby. That's what I wanted to see. We got a, a metal uh, coupling, which is perfect. It's been a long time since I've messed with cast iron in a foundation. This is like... Not, not very often you see this in Virginia. So let me, let me break this up a little bit more. All right, but now, you know what? I think it's loosened up. Let's try to wiggle out this uh, trap. I need to clear this out. More. Let's see if I can wiggle it out. Oh, I gotta wiggle. Oh, oh, look at that. It's a little piece of relic history here. It's kind of funny. This house was built in the 70s. Surprised there's not PVC in here. But that's a big deal that just happened. So it's a two inch line. The tub is inch and a half. So it's, it's just interesting. But well, um, that's, that's done. The next step is I got to start measuring out and see where my center is going to be. Look at this fancy leg. Isn't it such a fancy leg? Unbelievable. So we have this exposed waste system that we have, and what we have to do is we have to put it all together. So I could take a measurement and see where I got to pop the inch and a half waistline up from the floor. So since it's concrete, it's a one shot deal. So this is how I do it. I like to have all my material here so I could put it all together and make sure there's no mistakes because if there's a mistake, I got to rip everything out and move the waistline, which I don't want to do. So let's start working on that. I'm trying to look at the angle here. I think it's probably right about here. I think that looks a pretty great with the tub. So I'm gonna mark, I'm gonna mark the uh, chrome pipe right here, just so I have a reference. And then this waste, I'm probably gonna mark it right here, give or take. Those, those are not my final cuts, but they're gonna be pretty close to the final. I'll probably have to take a little bit back because I have this huge Get area here that the waist could move and then this is always small but these these are very generous actually we could like almost two inches to work with so i don't have to be perfect and like it's actually good because i could adjust back and forth so that's my measurement and it's looking like 
I got one and a half here and then I have one and a half here. So that means my one and a half from the edge of the tub, that's where this is gonna go. So this plumbing is pretty much gonna be really close to the wall. So let me get a uh, measurement in the bathroom and see where we're at. So I have 14 and a half from the middle of the drain to the end of the tub. So I'm probably gonna come out 14 and a half plus drywall plus tile plus another inch. So let's uh, go into the bathroom and figure that one out. So I'll we'll do 14 and a half plus half inch for drywall plus half inch for tile. And then I'm gonna come out probably another, I'm gonna go one and a quarter. So that's gonna be my level line. So we got 14 and a half, 15 and a half, 16 and a half, 16 and three quarters. Eh, I'll make a 17 total. So we have to come 17 inches off that wall. So let's do that. So 17 is right here. You know what's so funny? It's marked. All right, so let's get our uh, key trap and see how much I got to cut back on the cast iron. Probably to here, give or take. Well, I probably have to hammer out this much more of concrete so I could cut it back a little bit more and have a little bit of wiggle room. But I think that looks pretty good. So let me hammer this out and then clean up around the cast iron. I don't want to cut this twice because it's cast iron that's a pain in the neck. So we have to use a connection that goes to cast iron basically. So let me cut it back a little bit. You see the natural bend in that pipe, isn't that funny? So I'm gonna have to cut it back probably to here because of the bend so I can put the coupling on. It shouldn't, it should be fine, but I wanna make sure I don't have any issues. So I'll probably cut it right here and then we'll go off of there and hook up the uh, new PVC plumbing. I have two metal blades for this. I got the really like thicker blade and I got the thinner metal blade. I'm gonna try the thinner metal blade first and see how tough this cast iron is. Sometimes the cast iron is not very tough and you could use a smaller blade. If it's a little bit tougher, we gotta go with the big uh, heavy duty blade. So let's see what happens. Slow go, so settle in. I'll be back in a minute. When you do this, you don't wanna force the blade. Let the teeth do the work. I made the little notch with the skinny blade. Now I went with a thicker blade because instead of me cutting on one piece of pipe, now I'm basically through the cast iron and now it's cutting the top and the bottom of the pipe. And I feel like this is just easier to do. It's a little trick that I've done over the years. So uh, I started in the trade working on a lot of cast iron. So I'm very familiar with it. So let's continue to cut. Getting closer. workout cut that was actually a pretty good cut right there all right let's put the uh coupling on i'm gonna clean it up a little bit but this is my test fit oh yeah that's like perfect now let's get the inch and a half and you can see i got plenty of room to work so that's basically that's good so now let me cut a little tail piece and then I'll remeasure from the wall. This gets even more complicated because we have this, where the spout goes, it's tiny, it's short. So if I put the waistline completely in the middle of the room, you know what's gonna happen? I'm gonna be short and this is not gonna flow into the tub. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to move this waistline back a little bit because this tub is not gonna be centered with the actual room because since we're doing a wall mount install, I can't do it. Good thing I caught that. I was thinking, I'm like, hmm, how about the, the wall mount? So the wall mount's gonna come out like about this much, but if you see where it ends up, the lip of the tub, I'm gonna show you right now. So we're gonna have the force that's gonna be basically like this. If I keep the tub complete in the, in the middle. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to move the tub over a little bit to the right. Good thing I caught it. So let's uh, get a new measurement. I just plumbed it in. I cut all the the waistlines and it looks really good. I'm gonna tighten it up. So I have 17 inches from here to here and then I have two and three quarters from this two by four to the back of the pipe. It's nice and level. I'm gonna tighten up those clamps on the coupling that you use for a waistline that's not PVC. It's unfortunately 
cast iron right here. So we could use one of these bad boys. So let me tighten this up. And then we're going to start filling this up with, uh, not concrete first, but we need to fill it in with a bag of rocks, basically. So we don't want to fill this whole thing up with concrete. Then one day someone else has to get to it. We're not doing that. So I'll show you how I do it. I just tighten it up one side, then tighten up the other side, then tighten up the other side, because I want like an equal, I want it equal on the tightness scale. And so that's basically done. All right, now we're gonna fill this up with rocks. Before I do that, let me fill it up with some water. Feels nice and dry. All right, let's fill this up with all-purpose stone. I'll use the whole bag. All right, plus one 50-pound bag, and then I want to have about two inches of concrete to fill here because honestly, you don't need more than two inches of concrete, especially it's going to be under the tub. I'm going to install some self leveling cement. So I just hit it with my pry bar and just compact it down. Next up, I'm going to mix a little bit of concrete and then just make it kind of level with this whole area. And I kind of have to be really good with this whole floor because remember, we have a clawfoot tub. All this is going to be exposed, so I need to be like perfect. It has to look really, really good. Uh, that's just the name of the game. And let's uh, start mixing some concrete. I love mixing up concrete. I don't think I need like a lot, but I'll just mix the whole bag. This is all set up, the concrete's laid, I put the rocks underneath, this is how you do it. I have about two and a half inches of concrete. Next up, we're gonna let this concrete set up, and then we're gonna tile the floor, put self-leveling cement, detrit heat, we got a whole bunch of stuff going on in here. And then once everything's done and tiled, we're gonna set the tub. So that's the next part of this video, and I'll catch you in a little bit. I'm tiling, so I'm finishing up, and I have the scutch in here, and I got my connection here. It's inch and a half by inch and a half female and then an inch and a half locking nut. And I'm looking, and this is what I'm seeing right now. So the locking nut is raising up a little bit, which is what I figured, because that's pretty common. So what I have to do is I need to be level with the floor like this. So I need to come down a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut about, I'm gonna cut basically, the, the tile's pretty thick. It's about three eighths of an inch thick. And then I'm gonna cut just a little bit lower then the Dietrich heat matting. And worst case scenario, I'll have to get my cutting tool that cuts inside the PVC pipe and cut it a little bit lower, but that's what I'm gonna go with right here. I'm gonna make a nice flat cut with my vibrating saw and then let's see what happens. quarter inch of space here so I gotta notch out the concrete a little bit more and I'm gonna set this in and it's pretty close so if I put the tile in I should be right about where I need to be so that's actually looking really good and then I could also raise and lower this a little bit discussion so I could tighten this up no problem so Sometimes on tubs, you can't do that and you have to, it's like really tight, but in this situation, we, we should be good. So let me clean this up a little bit more. This is closed, so I, so if you loosen it up, it's just gonna be off a little bit, but then when I go to tighten it, bingo. Perfecto. If I tighten a little bit more, it's sitting perfect. So that's the next step. Not easy, by the way. If you're tiling the floor as well as putting in this tub, it's gonna be easier. But uh, if you're doing it, just the tub and someone's tiling, you really need to coordinate. And cause you know, cutting this ring is actually also very hard and it depends on what tile. That's one of the hardest parts that's now done with this tub. Hopefully 
everything works out. It should be nice and centered. So we'll, uh, next step is we're gonna install the tub. Let's go over these legs on this tub. Setting the tub is heavy. This is a cast iron tub, so keep that in mind. The legs, there's two different legs. You see this leg, and it's a longer, it's a longer leg, and it's a shorter leg. So obviously the back, and also this is different, like the actual plate. I had them on backwards. I didn't even think about they would be different legs, so I just swapped them around. And then let's go and look underneath. What do we have? We have these two bolts. We have a washer, we have a lock washer. And over here, I didn't put in any shims. But on this side, I put one little shim in because I felt like it looked better. So you see one shim there. And that's basically it. I used some six inch pieces of wood to like adjust everything. This is not like a standard tub. So I just wanted to give you the visual on that. So next up, we're gonna start installing the waste. Lots of stub out. This is the scutcheon that's gonna go on. It's gonna go into, there's a hole right here. And you can see there's another hole right here. So now it's all metal. So I do have a little bit of room here to cut. I have about that much. And then this one, I have quite a bit to, to cut. So I have room to work with all this stuff. I am gonna, gonna use some Blue Monster. I'm gonna wrap the threads to just make sure we don't have any leaks. But it lines up really well with the existing faucet. Just for full disclosure, this is way harder to do than a normal tub. It's really, really not easy. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Now that's cut, I'm gonna take off this ring. I'm gonna dry fit everything first. So I will put, like I said, everything we're gonna do right now is a dry fit. That looks really good. I actually just, I'm gonna have to cut it off a smidgen. <laughs> Let's take a look. You can see right here, I have to cut about a quarter inch off, which is fine. That's exactly why I cut it a little bit long. So let me cut it very nice. We still have, we have room for the washer. This is actually, I am not moving this whatsoever. I think this is like really, really nice. Next piece we'll cut is the, the top, which is the overflow. So same thing. It's funny, what's old is new again, right? The, the cycle of life. So I can't, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to pull this all out and then slip it in and then adjust. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna blue monster everything, put the scutcheon on, so everything is ready to go. Next up I just learned we're going to push that down ever so slightly. And that looks really good. So I, I could get to the nut and I could get to I can get to everything. I had to take this back off. Now I will put the bottom drain assembly back on. And then we're gonna have to massage everything in. Next up, this rubber wash is gonna go underneath, like here, like so, so you can see it. So right underneath where the cast goes. I'm probably gonna hit this with some block because why not? That makes sense. So let me hit the let me hit the rubber with the block and then we'll uh, install this pop-up drain assembly. That's all blocked off and now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna install some good old plumber's putty. There it is. It's been a while since I put plumber's putty in. And then we're gonna wrap it around like so. Put quite a bit on there. So it kind of just, it, it helps, it helps attach everything. One more little thing you gotta do is you gotta take out the stopper. So to do that, you just push it down and then unscrew it. That's what I did. And now let's install it finally. All right, got it going, to pick this up. I'm tightening up the ring back here, and then I'm gonna tighten up the ring on the bottom where the waist goes. So that looks pretty good. That washer looks really good. This is nice and tight. That's nice and tight. Scutcheon is down. That looks really, really good. And then you see all the plumber's putty came out. That looks perfect. So I'm not gonna put this stopper in yet because I wanna make sure we don't have any leaks, but this feels nice and solid. Lastly, we have to put the overflow in. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna throw some good old plumber's putty around this. I'm gonna throw a block around the big old gasket. I'll show you how that works. 
we're going to bring in a gasket that sort of skinny side goes like that. I can't really see because I'm video, but you could get, you get the idea. So let me start putting this together and I'll show you how it looks when I'm done. Also, I just want to show you something. There's like one side that's vertical and one side that's slanted. This side right here has to go on the drain itself and this side's going to go on the tub. Moment of truth, let's check it out. It looks really good to me. I'm going to fill the tub up and we'll check the overflow. That might take a while and then we'll see what happens. But so far it looks nice and dry. We're hitting the overflow right now. Let's take a look. Looks dry. Still nice and dry. And you can hear it coming out. Now I'm going to pull the stopper. Stopper is full. We can shut the water off. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, I don't have a slug because that'd be horrible. Super dry. All right, let's take a look. Oh, I have a little tiny drip here where that connection, the, the fine thread connection was. Everything else is dry, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna uh, probably hit that with some Teflon tape instead of the block, and then uh, that'll be, that'll work. But it's just a little tiny drip. That's all we got. This might actually calcify and stop dripping. Sometimes that happens a lot, but uh, let me fix that real fast and then we'll wrap up this video. I've been hatless lately because I'm embracing my gray hair. Why should I hide it? I'm getting old. Older and wiser. It's a privilege to get old. But anyway, let me tell you, shout out to the old school plumbers that might be watching this video and laughing. Because 60 years ago, 70 years ago, 100 years ago, this is what we installed. Clawfoot tubs. 100 years ago, we barely had plumbing in houses. So I actually grew up in New York City in a clawfoot tub. My bathroom was so small, it didn't have a sink. Just a little fact about me. Uh, so I truly appreciate everything that I have and everything I work on. But Mario and Luigi would also have a tough time with this tub. This is not an easy install and the old school plumbers had way less tools and materials that were easier to work with. They had cast iron and galvanized. So shout out to the old school plumbers again. But this is how you install this tub. That's a claw foot that's exposed in 2023. If you have any questions, please ask. It wasn't easy. I'm gonna say it was like, on a scale of one to 10, it was probably like an eight and a half or nine. But, uh, you know, that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, again, please ask in the comments. If you like this video, please like it. The next video we're gonna do is going over this faucet system. I'm gonna take it all apart and go over in the next video. And then all of this, is like one connection with a shower head and everything. It's like kind of crazy. I've never seen it before. So that's the next video. So again, if you like this video, please like it. If you like all my home improvement videos, please subscribe. I appreciate all the love. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.